Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the permanent funds. The permanent funds is one of those governmental funds, one of the five governmental funds, the capital project, debt service, special revenue funds, the general fund, the big one. So the permanent fund is a separate one. Well, we're going to have to know the same thing, the purpose of it, the characteristic, and we need to learn the accounting, the journal entries, and see the financial statements. This is how you really understand the funds. You want to know what it is, that's fine. This is what I will do in this session. In the next session, I will work an example with journal entries. How do we establish the fund? Go through a few journal entries and show you the end product. The funds are easy, simple. Why? Because think of each fund as a checking account. That account ha has an incoming cash, outgoing cash, few due to few do, do from, which is receivable and payable, and we have the difference fund balance, we'll have revenues minus expenses. So seeing the big picture is important, but in this session, we only focus on understanding the purpose and the characteristic of permanent funds. We need to know what is a, what is the characteristic of a permanent funds? If we saw this in a multiple choice, can you identify it? Can you define it? Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So let's start by discussing characteristic of permanent funds and how a permanent fund is established. Think of a person with money. Doesn't have to have a lot of money, but some money that they want to contribute. So an individual will contribute a certain amount of money to this fund. We call it the permanent fund. Why do we call it the permanent fund? Because this individual don't want the money to be spent. So that's important. The principal amount, they don't want the principal amount to be spent. Hold on a second. So if you're giving me something, money, and you're asking me not to spend it, how good is it? Well, the money itself, the principal amount, the original amount cannot be spent. However, the earnings the income, the revenue generated from this money can be spent. For example, this money can be invested in a savings account. Let's assume someone contributed a million dollars for the sake of illustration. Say, I want this million dollars to be put in a permanent fund. It means you cannot spend this million dollars, but if you invest this money at 5%, every year you're going to get 50000 in interest revenue. Well, you can spend this money. So that's the first thing we need to know. Permanent fund means the original amount, the principal amount cannot be spent, and that's important. Earnings from this account, now that you can contribute money, you can contribute stocks. I, I gave you money because it's easy to relate to money, but an individual can contribute stocks, and those stocks will generate dividend revenue. Then you will spend the revenue, or they can contribute bonds, or the bo and the bonds will generate interest. So the original principal or the original investment cannot be spent. What can be spent? Earnings from that money. So a person put the money away, but say you cannot spend this money. Earnings from this money is designated very important for public benefit. So the income generated from investing the principal, such as could be interest, could be dividend, is used for purposes that benefit either the government or its citizen at large. And why, why do I emphasize the word at large? It means no particular group of citizens. You are not targeting a specific type of people because if you do, well, we're going to call it something else. Just hold on and hold on on that. This ensures that the earnings support public programs and services. And this is important. The earnings from that money, from that endowment, from that principal amount can be spent. Now, the government will have to respect will have to adhere to the terms set forth by the trust agreement. So this individual, this rich individual that contributed the money, 
They'll tell them exactly what they wanted it to be used for. It could be serving the public at large, but they, they can tell you. You can tell them, for example, here, you know, I want to maintain the public parks. Well, public parks benefit the citizens at large, not, not one particular specific group of people. The government cannot alter, they cannot change the intended purpose of the funds without the consent of the donor. Now, if the donor passes away, they can no longer change it at all. Now, bear in mind, we could have more than one permanent fund depending on the specific nature and terms of the trust agreement. The funds can be accounted for in various types of funds. So you could have many permanent funds. And the reason we need this flexibility, because each individual would want to serve a different purpose. One, one individual wants to maintain the cemetery. The other individual wants to maintain the public parks. The third individual wants to maintain the public libraries. So that's why we could have many permanent funds. But when a permanent fund is established, so this is we're diving a little bit deeper into the characteristic of it, we need to know who are the beneficiaries. Permanent funds are used when the beneficiaries are government or citizen collectively. It means at large. Again, I'm saying the same thing. And this is to ensure that the funds are used for public purposes. I know I keep saying this again and again, and there's a reason for that. Because if it's not, it's not permanent funds. Parks, libraries, other community services. Now, whether the principle is maintained or not, that makes a difference. The principal amount in a permanent fund is preserved. So if the principal amount, the original amount, is not protected, we no, we no longer have a permanent fund. The definition of permanent is something that doesn't go away. And what does not go away is the principal amount, meaning it cannot be spent. Only the income, obviously, something has to be spent, not the principal amount, then the income from that amount, from that account, which is the principal or the original amount cannot be spent, but the interest and the dividend is available for use. Now, trust whose earning benefit individuals, private organizations or other government, rather than the public at large, those are called private purpose trust funds. And we'll look at those later on. An example of this will be, for example, you want a fund that's going to help the families of falling police officers or firefighters. That's too specific. Then it's no longer a permanent fund. Well, this is called a private purpose trust fund. And we'll talk about that in a separate recording. So it's very important to know if it's not this why. That's why I keep repeating the earnings. First of all, the principal cannot be touched. The earnings will have to serve a public, a public purpose the citizen at large or a government, but that's serving the whole public. So it has to be a public purpose. This is when we have a permanent fund. So let's take a look at this table and help us determine whether we have a permanent fund or not. Let's assume we have a trust or a fund to benefit the government or its citizen. Would this be automatically a permanent fund? Not necessary. Why? Let's assume the fund, the trust, does not distinguish between earning and principal. Both may be expanded. It means both can be spent for a specified purpose. Hold on a second. If I can spend the principal, I no longer have a permanent fund because one characteristic of the permanent fund is yes, you want to serve the government and its citizens at large, but you cannot you cannot touch the principal. If you can touch the principal, this is not a permanent fund. What will be the fund for this? I would I would say this is a special revenue fund. The money is spent for a, for a specified purpose. Examples will be. Uh, funds established to support community centers, libraries, museum, or local history, historical sites. Why they are not permanent fund? Because we can, we can spend the principal. Once you can spend the principal, the original amount, it's no longer the case. Now, we have a tr the trust, which is a fund, to benefit the government and its citizen. And the trust stipulate that only earnings, not principal, may be expanded for the specified purpose. Is this a permanent fund? And the answer is yes. This is the definition of a permanent fund. What could be the case? Any of these up here, community centers, libraries, museum, can fit this, def can, can, can be used in a permanent fund. Or trust generating income for the public program while maintaining the, the principal amount intact, such as endowment for public universities. Or if you want to maintain local historical sites and museum, as long as you don't, the, the agreement don't touch the principal, the original amount, it will be a permanent fund. Let's assume we have a trust or a fund that's going to benefit individuals, private organization or other government. Well, these trusts are most commonly non-expendable, but they could be expendable. It means you can, you can 
spend the principal or not spend it it does not matter once once it benefits a specific individual or a group of individual not the public at large it's no longer a permanent fund it becomes here a private trust fund a private private purpose trust fund and would look at those in a separate recording it could be a scholarship funds funds established to support disaster relief for specific communities and trust set up to provide medical care for low income families here you are being specific not the public at large so going back to the permanent fund the permanent fund benefit the government and, and the citizen and its citizens at large and the other characteristic of it you cannot spend the principal amount that's why it's called permanent there's something permanent what's permanent the original amount let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com in the context of governmental accounting for permanent fund which of the following statements which of the following statement is true so we have one statement that's true okay permanent funds are used to account for resources that are restricted by the government hold on a second uh, are permanent funds yeah the principal amount is restricted is it restricted by the government not at all remember when do we have a permanent fund you remember that rich individual at the beginning of the slides they can do what they can establish a fund it's not the government that restrict the the use of it therefore a is out b the principal of a permanent fund can be spent stop right there that does that's not make it a true statement the principal of a permanent fund cannot be spent permanent funds may be established to benefit individuals stop it cannot benefit in specific individual it cannot benefit private organization it cannot benefit other government out so by process of elimination d is the answer the principle of permanent funds may not be used to support the reporting government's program or its citizenry yes the principle cannot be touched cannot be used cannot be spent so what can be spent the revenues generated from that principle the principle is the original amount that that individual contributed for a particular purpose that serve either the public at large or the government at large so the answer is d what should you do now you want to go to farhat lectures whether you are an accounting student a cpa exam candidate or just studying for professional development invest in yourself farhat lectures is always here to help stay safe and stay motivated